The Smirkus experience is intentionally immersive into the circus culture. Both for like the technical skills and like social, emotional skills. You have pretty much the same dream, like to inspire other people in the world. Summertime 2017 finds New England's premier youth circus celebrating its 30th anniversary. Under a touring big top, its 30 specially selected troopers perform a breathtaking array of acrobatic and aerial acts. <laughs> to those who have seen the circus, it comes as no surprise that comedy is a principal ingredient in each performance. What's fascinating about Smirkus is um, it was founded by Rob Merman, who came with a clown background. Clowning is very important for keeping the traditions of classic circus. The clown alley are often the storytellers of each Smirkus production. So you follow the story through the clown's eyes. It's all about the connection, the story, and the experience that the audience gets from beginning to end. And I think a lot of that does have to do with it always being directed by someone that is from the clowning world. An ice cream parlor in Montpelier, Vermont, the state's capital, is the setting where circus clowns observe a yearly rite. So it started by Rob Merman, way back in the day where we used to go to the Cape, and he would um, bring us all out uh, to ice cream after one of the um, shows. The founder of Circus Smirkus came in with a real wink and a nod. How the Smirkus got its name. The legend goes that it was my mother, my good old Jewish mother, because when I was a teenager and I said I wanted to run off to join the circus and find out what that life is all about, she looked at me sternly and said, Circus Schmirkus, go get a real job in a bank. <laughs> I remember that. So I took out the H and made it Circus Smirkus and I made that my real job. He wanted this to be a professional youth circus that aspired to um, exist in the traditional circus world. So I basically ran away to join the circus. This was back in 1968-69. I wanted to find out what the classic European circus was all about. And when I came back to the States, I wanted to create a circus that had the same qualities and lifestyle of the European shows that I was in. The idea was it had to be under a big top. We would tour to small towns around New England, just what like the old shows did. 1978 was the first time I used the term Circus Smirkus, but it was another 15 years before we got the big top and started touring around. He was mischievous, he was fun, he was, uh, he was not a heavy-handed director at any moment. Both Mormon and Wonderly have been directors at the Ringing Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Clown College. Every single member of the creative team on a directorial role has had a clowning background. Mark Lonergan, who helped me uh, design this show, uh, works with clowns year-round in his own um, productions in New York City. And, you know, I bring in uh, ringling clown coaches all the time. Barry Lubin uh, was here. Joel Jeske was here. He was, they were my clown coaches for this year's show. Both of them are straight from clown college. To be able to uh, call Barry Lubin up and say, I have a job and a need for you. Would you be interested in sharing your knowledge with the next generation? And for him to be giddy with excitement about doing that. Another former ringing clown played an important role in the 2017 performance. 
this year in particular, um, the music composed by Peter Brafano really springs to life with a three-piece band. In addition, at least two touring staff members have clowned on the greatest show on earth. I saw Ringling Brothers Circus for the first time when I was three years old and decided then, at three, that I wanted to become a clown. It started with Smirkus. I went to the Smirkus camp, went to Smirkus here, I performed here for two years, and then I went on to Ringling Brothers for uh, four seasons on and off. I was initially here as a trooper, which I did for four years. And then in 2004, I was on Ringling Brothers as a clown on the Blue Unit. I'd say Smirkus taught me everything I know about clowning. They really gave me my entire foundation. Um, and they gave me a love for it, like nothing else probably could have. The ex ringing mirth makers, says Troy Wonderly, came in with that knowledge, that understanding of physical comedy, slapstick, and the appreciation for old school clowning. I mean, we do it all in new ways and unique flavors, but uh, it's all based off of what we've learned um, collectively from generations of studying this art form. Of course, Circus Mercus wasn't built around comedy alone nor does any performer specialize in a single skill. I have been a clown and an aerialist for all three of my years. Each year I've gotten to be involved in more and more of the show. In this year's show I'm in the geometric aerial act and the rope cube act and I play the cleaning lady. Oh, also water spitting. So fun, I love water spitting. One of the things that I am passionate about is letting the kids realize that regardless of how they're cast in the show, they're equally valuable to this organization and to the final product. Everyone always assumes I'm only looking for talent at auditions, and of course talent is a very big piece of it. Um, more important than talent is potential and heart. You have to work hard, you have to have grit. You may be the world's best when you step in your run, or you may be someone that could become the world's best. Both of those are equally valuable to me, depending upon the theme and what our needs are for that show. Competitive auditions in the off-season went of the cast size to 30. And the audition process to get into the touring company is not easy. Kids from around the country send us videos, maybe 200 videos, and out of those 200 videos, we might choose 40 to come to a live audition and then out of that, we might choose five or six if we have open spots for the next summer. They come from across the United States as well as Canada and uh, Zambia. No, this is my first circus and it's, it's so amazing. It's fun. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not really sure what I expected, but this is a unique experience. I expected it to be fun, but I don't think I expected it to be this fun. I do contortion, hand balance, and fabric. You do a lot of drops and stuff like that. This is a group of pre-professional teenagers, and I don't come in with expectations that are different for the 12-year-olds or the 17-year-olds, really because they're going to blow any of my expectations, <laughs> so I don't need to have any. <laughs> Some newcomers may experience a bit of bewilderment when they report for training at the original Smirkus home site. My headquarters is on a 200-year-old farm in the middle of northern Vermont in a town of population 600. Early on in Greensboro, um, it becomes obvious that, yes, we need to take the skills that you have, add to them the ones that we think we can um, add in our basically 20-day period of training. And they might be the most talented person um, from where they are, and then they come here and they're surrounded by people who are maybe more talented and don't quite know how to fit, fit in. So we also have a group of um, younger girls here, four in particular, and they are so fun and quirky. And I think that the 12-year-olds really benefit by having those older troopers in so many ways, in growth, in respect, in looking up to them, in, in um, having them as role models. Regardless of how many years they've been coming, they it takes a couple of days, you know, to, to dip your toes into the pool and then to come into the pool. And then by the end of the first week, everybody is, you know, everybody knows one another. Getting to know the troopers and their backgrounds also was important to this college communicator. Basically, my job is to facilitate press when they come to the show. 
it's so different than anything I've ever done before. Um, I've never been to New England. I've never seen this part of the country. I've never been away from home for three months. I've never uh, lived in a trailer with 40 other people, but here I am and it's, it's absolutely incredible. We have 40 staff that are on the road with us. When we're in the rehearsal period, add to that the coaches and some of the uh, designers. We're typically about 55 staff. They're surrounded by people that have done it in the business or are still doing it in the business. And we're all here passionately trying to create a product that's unlike anything else out there. We have so many returning staff members that go out in other circus communities learn and bring that wealth of knowledge back just to help to see this continually grow and improve. I think the things that we help them with, um, the biggest one is probably a good sense of work ethic. To know like when you do something to really commit yourself to doing it and give it your all. I think that applies to anything that they will ever do in life. By the time the three-week training period ends, the cast will have learned the value of unity. I specialize in ball juggling, but also juggle rings, clubs, hats, anything that you can juggle. Before coming to Smarcus, this first-year trooper had been a solo performer. Now... It's a lot more of working together while juggling. If someone dropped something, it's more like, it's okay, we'll work together, we'll work this out. I feel like the community is definitely the best part of Smarkus and the teamwork. It's not, it's never only about one person, it's always about the group and how we can work together. And in no time at all, we're out here on the road for our seven week period. They do two shows a day, they jump to another town every two or three days, the tent goes up and down. So that's a traveling company of 70 people. We have to feed them three meals a day. They take showers. We have trailers on, on the site. And I believe that we are still the only youth circus in America that has a touring program under a big top. We're pretty unique in that we are both a theatrical circus, um, but also a very small mud show. It's very important to myself and the rest of the creative team that we just don't set out performers to do a generic series of tricks. This is our 30th anniversary and it was really important to me to try to create a theme that was unlike any that we've had under the big top before, while at the same time honoring acts and shows and the spirit of 30 years of adventure here at Circus Mercus. This year's theme is uh, called Midnight at the Museum. Uh, so we uh, open the show with a discovery that the hidden archive of this museum spring to life and uh, the show follows the chaos that ensues trying to put all those archives back in their rightful place. I am the curator of the show but much like um, Circus Mercus itself the people that are supposedly running the place are just as goofy and just as lighthearted as the members of the troupe themselves. One of the moments in this show the curator turns into a gorilla to play spoof on the tour guides that are working underneath him. There was always a gorilla in the show. More often than not, it had no relevance to the show, but it was a tradition. As you'll see a wonderfully lively Beethoven in this year's show. You'll see characters that play um, animals. One of my first visuals that popped into my head for this theme was uh, um, I wanted a dinosaur. I wanted that classic big dinosaur. That was actually an audition piece. Dinosaurs actually dance in the show. They have to be able to follow choreography and uh, be willing to sit inside a silly little costume and do something fun. So the ushers help me with the kids who sit like right up next to the ring curb. Um, there's little mats that are right, right in the front, which is one of the great things about a Smirkus show is that, I mean, not even within arm's distance, sometimes you're touching a performer, you're so close. Um, there's a youthful spirit that springs over that ring curb into the audience, regardless of each year, regardless of what theme we are presenting each year. I oversee all the whole show staff and make sure that the show runs 
as it should each show in collaboration with Troy. I kind of interpret the creative and the vision into a physical reality and it's anything that happens in the ring and it's all of the elements music, costumes, lights, sound, rigging, props, set, and of course I would say at least 90% the, the performers themselves. When you're loving the audience and giving them energy, they can't help but give that back. And I try to train the kids to use their ears to listen to every single audience and learn from them and go, ah, this is working, this is not working. How can we make the audience even more engaged? How can we get them to giggle even more? They will tell us what's right and what's not right. And the farther we go into tour, the more ownership these kids get because they get to put their next best trick in. And when we're here, we've created a show and that show is ours. It's all equally ours and that's really important to me. Circus is definitely more, more on the artistic side. It's uh, less, less competitive and more, you have more artistic freedom. The youthful cast members are quick to point out the never-ending contributions of staff professionals who guide their experiences both in and outside the ring. Yeah, we have a professional rigger who travels with us and makes sure everything is safe and set up. And we get to really craft the show based on a theme and we create the acts from scratch. I was responsible for, for creating two acts this year. I created the Aerial Shapes Act, which is the opening number in the show, and then also the Contortion Act um, with the little octopus looking underwater creatures. I don't know, I haven't really done much Contortion Acts in the past. Being able to take these kids who had just this like raw talent and craft it into this really clean and like finished number is the biggest challenge and also the biggest reward. It's different because we have like a small space to work on and we all have to fit and we all have to squish each other and <laughs> it's hard to breathe versus like just being one person on like a small space other than four people in a small space. Critical timing is not the only requirement for routines like this. In the beginning it really, really scared me because like, we were trying these big things that I've never done before. There's also the matter of trusting your partner. It definitely took a lot to trust her, but I really do trust her now and she never drops me, so that's good. I've gotten so comfortable on the duo trip. I really love it. There's always many opportunities for team building. Every crisis seems to bring about an opportunity to learn from it. You can only plan for so much and then you have to just kind of roll with the rest as it happens. I've worked here for 20 years. Anyone that's been in the circus for two days knows it's an exhausting business. They all come from training year-round in circus so they do a lot of physical activity through the year. The difference um, is that it's every single day and it's all day that they're doing it. Most of us tend to have like a dominant side. So I think a lot of injuries come from like asymmetrical overuse. So a lot of what we focus on here is really getting them to do things on both sides and then getting them to train, you know, the other side of their body outside of what they do in the show to help avoid injuries. You have like the opening day and then the first city's excitement. Um, everything gets really exciting and then, you know, around the middle it sort of starts to get a little bit of a grind. You know, it's shows, 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 shows. Every day starts to feel a little bit the same. Um, and that's when people start getting tired. And usually around that time, especially this year, we had a little virus come through, so everybody started to get sick. So we've got this combination of like exhaustion and then like, you know, like colds and sickness. You get very comfortable with uh, fluidity. Uh, you never quite know what's going to happen show after show. I'm constantly rewriting the show for bumps or bruises or illness. Um, uh, the heat may cause me to change the show. If a performer got hurt and they can't be in the show, how to rewrite the act without them in it in a short amount of time. Sometime when your act is next, perhaps. What has to happen is the audience has to get a seamless show full of passion and heart. How much work we have to do between the shows to accommodate for that um, is different day by day. And the beauty to having a director on road with a production like this is that can happen in real time. Having him as a professional circus performer being part of our show and also part of our troupe is very helpful. 
So he adds another level of professionalism to the tour, and then he's also like a father figure to a lot of us. And one trooper proudly claims Wonderly as her real father. I'm Ariana Wonderly. I'm 13 years old. Um, I've been por performing with my dad since I was... Two years old. Two years old. So when I was 10, I got the opportunity to become a trooper. And my mom, she used to perform in the ring, but now she does all the ticketing and all the crazy <laughs> stuff um, outside of the ring. And uh, to have two of my girls be a part of this organization is just great. And I'm getting teary-eyed because the company is definitely... I don't know, our hearts are in it. And getting a chance to step in the ring and uh, play with my children has been one of the greatest gifts I've ever had. And uh, it's been uh, one of my biggest pleasures being uh, the artistic director here at Smirkus is doing it year after year. Many years, we will have one, two, or three kids get accepted into collegiate circus programs. We have two this year. In a week, I'm leaving to go to Ecole Nationale de Cirque in Montreal, uh, training circus. The second senior trooper, Sam Landa, also will enter the collegiate level program at the elite Canadian school. It was a um, tangled mess for a while, but one that we knew about. We've got to take these two lead performers out of this company, um, redirect all of the members' attention to writing a show that makes sense without those two characters' roles, and then by shifting other people around, then I have to figure out how do you fill the holes that they then left. Well, a good example for uh, last uh, night is because we were dropping one of our performers out of fabric, we actually dropped one complete fabric out of the show, had to re-block those fabrics. Another crowd favorite, the eight-legged octopus contortion routine, unexpectedly had to be downsized from four to three troopers. Once again, the change goes virtually unnoticed among onlookers. These are professional kids. They know how to step up and really turn on the focus and cover for each other. It's one of the benefits of having kids that are multifaceted, multi-talented. They're not getting paid for this. They're actually paying for this experience. They're paying to have a professional experience that will become a springboard to a professional career in many cases. And if twice daily performances and practice sessions weren't enough, there is more. All troopers have chores, so I am one of the costume assistants for setup and teardown. I also work concessions during the shows. I sell popcorn during intermission, which I love doing because I love having that opportunity to interact with the audience. And um, we also have to do pots where we wash all the um, pots that the pie car where we get our food has cooked with. So I take out um, all the trash. On tour, I have to pick up the bleacher trash. Some troopers love bleacher trash, and they love to, you know, find the hidden treasures that exist under the bleachers that the audience members leave behind. Some kids love teardown. That's a time when we're coming together as a company. You know, the 30 troopers plus the counselors and the coaches are working together to put away all the props and pack them up and set them in the truck to go on to the next stop. Helping with all of the chores around the lot, it's just another part of becoming a part of that circus family that's incredibly important to all of us. The youthful cast members are quick to point out the never-ending contributions of staff professionals to support their performances. If you're out of circus, like for me, I get a lot of negative feedback. But here at Speakers, you want to get positive feedback, like, wow, that's so amazing. I try to instill in them a sense of longevity, of thinking of things in the big picture, and you know, not just what's good for today, but what's going to be good for you know this week, this month, this year, five years, ten years. Sort to see how what I do now really affects m your body in particular. So I think there's all that nurturing goes on out here that just happens organically because it's the right way to treat people. Of no less importance amid the all-consuming demands of circus life on the road is the need by many to seek out a competent, attentive listener. Um, the counselors are super awesome and it's been really nice to be able to talk to them anytime I have anything going on. Um, they're super supportive. And yeah, I talk to the counselors a lot. Um, the counselor-trooper relationship is a really special one. We establish a lot of trust within our, our team and I get to work on teams with both 
staff and troopers and so I get to see uh, how those two are paralleling. We step into that ring grateful for the opportunity to share our skills, our love and our joy for this beautiful beast which is called Circus with the communities that we face. And at the same time make a connection with the community members, stay with some families, be a part of their family and then uh, we ask that the homestay providers bring them back and forth to the show site. The youth circus also taps into a pool of volunteers for other services. I'm the house manager. Uh, I'm, I'm also the volunteer coordinator, so we have during each show um, several ticket takers, ushers, programmer passer outers, uh, parking, parking help, so I recruit all of them. They help make the show happen, so we couldn't do it without them. Um, Smirkus has raised millions of dollars for nonprofits all over New England um, over the past 30 years, and it's a wonderful partnership. And it is because of uh, kind hearts and souls out there that help us stay afloat. I think Smirkus will continue to flourish even if we're at a, a crossroads in the circus industry right now. Smirkus, we're having one of the best seasons that we've had in our 30 year history. So we're doing something right, and I think we'll continue to do that. It's the most joyful experience I've had in a work environment ever. There's a lot of magic in it and just a lot of really incredible folks that are making something spectacular happen. I see the circus arts as a medium that transforms people for the better. We are a grand version of what I believe the world should be. We have kids of different ages, different genders, different religions, different backgrounds here, different beliefs. I honestly could not have imagined a better experience to be a jumping off point for a professional career in circus. Um, I definitely look to do circus professionally after I graduate high school and have that as a career path. And I think Smirkus is a, definitely a great way to get a head start in that. Before starting Smirkus, I didn't even know that was a possibility. But being here, doing shows every day, twice a day, has helped me to realize this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Well, I've gained a lot of new skills, and um, I've also gained a lot of new friends. And I've also, like, I've gotten a lot more independent since I've been here. I definitely feel I've become more confident in myself. And I think that it's been a really important experience to help me um, grow up. They definitely grow up. And I think everybody says Smirkus has absolutely changed my life for the better. Whether they're here on staff or trooper or they're here for a year or they're here for 10 years. I just wish an experience like this could exist year round because it brings a lot of joy into my life and that to me is growth. When I was 15 years old, I had no idea that I would be here 17 years later, that I would be production manager. So I can't imagine my life without Smirkus. The greatest satisfaction is absolutely watching the kids in the ring and seeing the joy that they're having performing for the kids on the outside of the ring that are just absolutely in love with what they're seeing and you're inspiring kids and you're teaching them this wonderful world of circus that they just don't maybe have an opportunity to otherwise. Sorry! <laughs> My name is... I start with him. This show that we just came out of, I had two people come up and asked if I was 18 yet and would I be graduating this year. I'm 44 years old. To be mistaken for 18 is a wonderful joy. This is a fountain of youth here. So yes, I am surrounded by people that are passionate by this art form. Thank you so much. You know, the hard work pays off because we see 800 people leave this tent two times a day, beaming and glowing. Thank you. And every year we get to bring 30 more kids on this wild journey and bring them down the road and show them a better version of themselves. They learn how to become the best them through Circus Circus. Reporting on Vermont's award-winning traveling youth circus, I'm Lane Talbot. And may all your days be Smirkus days. <laughs>